Hello there and welcome to this exciting lesson in Revit Structure. In this lesson, we are going to learn on how you can model your connections in Revit. Now, in this lesson, I'll just focus on a single-sided end plate connection. That's how it's called in Revit. You can see from the picture there, we have the plates, you know, in the boards. And this connection is a moment connection, okay? Now, we are working on the assumption that the connection is already designed. So, at this point, what I want to teach you is how you can model your connections, okay? If you like what I'm doing, make sure that you subscribe to my channel and make sure that you comment if you want the next video to be on, you know, detailing of connection in Revit 10, put the comment there to say detailing, okay? I will not to say that people would like to see how you can detail in Revit. Now, the other thing that I want to mention is that I have a course dedicated on steel structures, okay? It's a detailed course of about 18 hours and I keep on uploading more and more content where you're going to learn everything about, you know, steel structures in Revit from, you know, modeling, you know, both the structural steel members and kind of, you know, model, you are going to learn on how to do it, the connections, you know, the detailing, including the production of the construction documents or within Revit. So if you are interested, make sure that you check the link in the description and also the first comment and check it out. You might be interested, okay? So without wasting much of your time, let's go ahead and get started with our lesson right now. So from there, you see, that is the connection that we'll be working on. Now, I've just hidden some of the other parts I'll show you. So I've just, you know, explored to show how you can, you know, these, you know, connections, the place and the boards are, you know, are connected right there. Okay. So if I just go back to the other model, this is actually the whole model. I've just hidden it in that view. Okay. So I'll go back there and we'll be working on this joint now the first thing that i'll do is to select you know that member hold control select the three of them and go to the selection box just want to work on this particular you know joint okay i'll select on that box and simply drag it like that then i'll drag it like that and up there I'll do like that, just want to concentrate on this joint. Okay, so like that, select this one and reduce it in that way. Okay, so we have our joint here. So to create your connections, the first step that you need to do is to load the connections, okay? Because we are using the connections within our Revit from the library, okay? So to do that, just go to steel, then you have the connections right here, then go to the settings, Click on connection settings. Once you click there, just make sure that it loads. Once it loads, you should be able to load the connection. Now, from here, you can filter what you want to load, but I'll just load all the connections here. Then you'll see what I'll do later on. Okay, so I'll just select the first connection. If you want, you can go ahead and check all these connections. But I know I want a single-sided end plate, but I don't want to waste time checking what I'm looking for. I'll simply select everything and add there then click on ok meaning that all the connections for revit are already loaded here all right now to create a connection you there are two ways that you can create your connection you can start by first of all selecting the two members then click on connection or first of all click the connection then select the two members and finish i like by first of all selecting the members that i want to connect just like that then I'll go to steel and click on connection. Once you do that, the connection that you have put right there is a generic connection as you can see from there, okay? So if I orbit like that, that is what we are going to see. For any kind of a connection that you use in Revit, you start with a generic connection. After that, you click the small arrow right there and find the connection that you want. Mind you, I mentioned to you that you can go ahead and start checking this connection but I know that what I'm looking for is a single-sided, you know, uh, end plate connection. So I can simply search within there and I'll, that way I should be able to find it quickly. As you can see, it's right there. I'll pick on it. Okay. It will be loaded like that. Click outside. You can see that from there it will be loading. But just make sure that as it's loading there, 
make sure that you are at fine level of detail so that you see the connection as you can see from there i have the connection now if i check the connection this is the first step we are just loading the defaults now you need to go you need to check how you've designed your connection meaning that the size of the plate the size of the bolts the nuts and everything and then just go to the properties and adjust this is what i'm going to do and the procedure applies to any kind of a connection in revit so what i'm going to do is to simply select on the connection right there then click on edit type then i'll duplicate two has been added then click on ok then go to modify parameters click on edit okay so that we change the properties you know according to the to how we've designed our connection now within here you see that you you, you should be able to see what is happening there if i click there this is the same thing which is here i'll just click there i can zoom in then enter it right there then it's easy for me to orbit as i keep on changing things here i should be able to see what is happening there then i'll simply close it like that then the first one is the cop the top and bottom cops for here for this one this is a single uh, an end plate so there is no copying whatsoever here so i'll leave everything here the way it is i'll go to the bottom i'll leave it okay if you have something like what you are seeing on the picture here then you need to change the coping but in this case it doesn't apply i'll simply go to the plate and the bots once i click there then i have what is the plate alignment and all this and this is what we are going to change for this case of a plate okay the thickness you can start changing it's up to you and what you are putting here is according to the design of your connection okay so if i want maybe a 15 i can go ahead and click there that is the thickness for my plate it's up to me then i'll go to bolts and holes okay the first thing i need to do you see that we have imperial units but if i want metric i'll first of all go to the you know the bolt type here then find the standard that you want for me this is the standard that i want to use once i change it here then i have the metric if i want to use a 16 okay for me that is okay then once you do that go to the bot grade i want 8.8 .8, as you can see that is okay so i'll go to the next one horizontal boards okay so how do i adjust these boards you know horizontally okay so maybe i want to change maybe from here i want to move the board inside a bit okay maybe i can change the projection maybe to 40 i click in another box you see that it's you know the plate is increasing because i specified there to say bot edge if i change to projection you see it will behave differently here if i go back to 38 i click in another box you see that the plate is still changing the bot is intact so i want to have 40 there i also want to have 40 there okay so i'm happy i'm just adjusting the the the, the plate Okay, as you can see by projection then i'll go to vertical boards meaning that up and down how do i want to change it from there i'm just going to pick secondary that's okay that is the layout from this one i'll set total from top as you can see from here then the plate height okay the plate height from the top up to the bottom let me say maybe 250 click in a different box as you can see from there then the layout let me start with the zero click in a different box you see that it simply means that from the center of the first board we have zero so we have to drop it okay so if i start with a 40 it's up to you you see that you can start checking if it makes sense actually it's right there at the top there i can simply maybe say 38 because i want it to protrude a bit on top as you can see I'm happy with what is there then i want maybe the plate to go down remember this is the moment connection so i want the 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 flange both the flange and the web to be welded to that plate okay so i'll increase maybe this one to 255 just click anywhere else you see that it's going to go down but there's still a gap there so i'll say maybe 260 click anywhere else See that i have it right there now it's protruding up and down okay all right so the spacing between these boards the number we have three if i want maybe four i can change there click in a different box you see it's going to go there 
but I just need three boards. So I'll just leave three. Then if I want to change the spacing maybe to 70, I can just add it there, then click somewhere else. You see that it's going to it's going to change. Okay, so the start distance, okay, from the first board. If I want to change, let me say 40. Click there, you see that again it protrudes up, but while maintaining the bots. Okay, so I'll not waste too much time. I'm happy with what I have right here. Let me just change the, intermi the intermediate distance maybe to 80. We see what happens. Click somewhere else. At least now I can move the bot up and down. So you can use this one to move the bot up and down with these settings on top here. So as you can see, I'm happy with the connection. Okay. We don't need stiffeners and everything. If I go to the world, I'll just maintain the, the world here, which is, you know, six millimeters everywhere. So, you know, I can simply put my world there. That is the size for my world. So I'm happy with my connection there, as you can see. Okay. Then it's just a matter of clicking. Okay. And simply wait for it to load. Then click on apply. Again, give it a bit of time. Okay. Then click outside. You see that it's going to, to adjust. Okay. So that is the connection. If I select on it, you see that it's called single-sided end plate number two. So if there's a similar connection within the model like this one, I'll simply be swapping with this name. All the settings are there and to just be a matter of using. Okay. Now, I just want to focus on this note. So... What I want to show you is if I want to use the same connection, maybe the size of the balls, the place and everything, it's just a matter of switching with this one. So what I'm going to do is to simply, once again, select that column, hot control, select that beam, okay? And I'll go to steal the connection. I've swapped with the generic connection. Then from there, I'll simply find the single-sided end plate connection. Yes, yeah, single Okay, sided end plate connection. You see that the other one which I created, that's why it's important for you to duplicate connection because now you just need to be switching. Okay, if it's a similar connection that you want, you know, on that particular joint. So you see we have the connection there and right here. Okay, so you can see that this is not good, especially the edge, edge and the end distance. So you can go ahead. Let me see, quickly change this one because you don't want anything like that. The connection might fail. So click on edit once again. So I'll go to horizontal because I know what I'm supposed to change. So I'll simply go to plate boards, then horizontal boards. So from here, uh, let me just see what is happening here by zooming in on that joint then if i want i can change this one to 50. click there it's changing on the other side so i also need to change this one to 50. click as you can see let me say 60. you can see it's expanding there so i think with 60 i seem to have enough space there click on ok Wait for it to load, apply, okay, and click on finish, click outside. You see that now the edge distance looks okay. So it's up to you on how you detail as a detailer. You should know all the standards in terms of detailing. But all in all, this is how you, you know, you create your connection. Again, as I mentioned, you know, we have a number of connections here. And the way you are going to apply them differs. You see we have a huge list but as I've mentioned in the course, all these connections, most of these, the most commonly used connections have been explained in detail within the course. So you'll do well to check it out and enroll in the course. Now, if I just want to check the, uh, the colors, it's not necessary because in detail, you can go ahead and start detailing. Again, in the course, it's explained. But if I just want to change the color, maybe the quickest could be, let me just select on that connection and break it. Just want to break it so that I have the possibility of, of you know, uh, changing the colors. But it's not necessary. I don't encourage you to be breaking the connection because then its parametric nature is disturbed. You can't change. You can't go to, you know, to those parameters and change. But I just want to show you how you can add the colors. 
I've just broken the connections. Then I'll just go to VG. Then I'll just search for bots because now I have the possibility of searching for bots. We have the bots there. Then I'll change, go to patterns, click there, then click, click there, change the color. I just want to have maybe that color there. Okay. Okay. Apply. Okay. So we have the color there. If I check the other one, the color is right, right there. Then I can click on the plate there. Just want to do something as what you see. But again, I have to emphasize that don't break the connection. If you break the connection, be sure that you are set, everything is done. Otherwise, you can't go back and start, you know, going to the properties and changing, you know, the connections because you'll have broken the is, you know, parametric, you know, properties. Okay, but I just want to show you on how you can show this to maybe you want to show the fabricator on how assuming that this is a very very complicated detail this is how you do to show the one who is fabricating on how to join these parts together okay go back there select the plate right click override graphics in view by element then now change to solid fill the color let me just give it uh, what's the color for the okay let me just pick that color okay apply okay Click outside. I can do the same on the other one, but I'll just leave it. Then if I want to do something similar to this, if you're interested in presenting like, like that, okay, I'll still show you. So I'll select on that beam. Then I'm just going to use the displacement there. Then I can simply move it outside a bit. Select the plate there and Pick it from there. Make sure I have it somewhere there. I can drag it a bit. Now, this is too much. Let me do like that. It's too much once again. Okay, just a bit so that you see my whole point. So I'll just end here. What I'll do is to simply now select on that beam, then pick the path. You see that I can add those lines. So sometimes why I want to do this is for example, if the connection, this is a simple connection. I'm just showing you the process. But if it's a complex connection here and you want to show the fabricator or the one installing on how the parts are connected, you can still utilize this. Okay. Otherwise, with what I just did before doing this, you can simply go ahead and start detailing. So here we are. This is how you do your connections in Revit structure. As I've mentioned, you can do any kind of a connection in Revit. So once again, if you like what I'm doing here, please subscribe to my channel and like this video. That way I'll know that you like what I'm doing and I'll continue doing some more. So see you in some future tutorials.